how to remove backgrounds from images in Affinity Designer. Hi, Kerry here from Dream Creator B and welcome to my channel where we show you how to make money online with low content products like KDP, low content books, printables and digital planners. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can remove backgrounds from images. I'm not just going to show you about a photograph because there are lots of people that actually need that. But with KDP or printables or anything like that, we actually want images that we can manipulate, take things out of, put them in other settings and make them more unique that way. So what I did is I went off to Pixabay and I did a search for some animals. Now, the actual image that I did a search for didn't come back up when I did wanted to show you where I found it. So I'm going to show you what image I'm going to use. So I'm going to use this image here and it is a bit big. So I'm just going to resize it. Now I did download the biggest image and I do know that they have SVGs, but for this purpose, I have got the PNG just to show you how that is done. And all I want to do is I want to take this cat out of this image because I want to place this cat, say, in another image. So let's get started. So I'm going to go file, new. I've already got some presets set up. So I'm doing color page with no bleed, which is my eight and a half by 11. 400 DPI is the highest DPI that Affinity Designer goes to. I do need to make sure that this DPI is actually set because I am bringing in other images that are not vector based. Now, if I was just drawing and just doing vector based images, this would not matter at all. But because I'm combining different things, it does matter. Um, I want it portrait. I'm not going to create an artboard because I'm just doing this image. I prefer embed. Um, embed is where the image is embedded into the document and preferred link is the other one. Now linked is that it's linked to wherever the image is. Now, if you move your document, then it loses its linking. It'll give you a warning when you open up the document and you need to relink it. Uh, CMYK is the color scheme I'm using because I want this to be for a coloring book. So I need to make sure that that is that. I've done my margins to be 0.5. Your minimum that you need really is 0.375 um, for the inner margin. And for the outer margins, it's 0.25 unless you're doing bleed. Well, I'm not doing bleed at all. So I'm just going to click create and then you can either go to this one here and place an image or you can go file and place an image or you can just grab hold of your image and then drag and drop so i'm just gonna drag and drop and i did get the biggest image but if you when you're dragging and resizing you remember you risk um pixelization, but not so much with PNG. It, it's more if it's a JPEG. So um, I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can actually see the image. Now I'm also going to make a duplicate of this image in case I make any mistakes. I'm also going to lock this one and I'm going to uncheck it as well. Now I need to go into the pixel persona because this is not a vector graphic. So I can't really do anything with this. I can try and convert it to curves, but it doesn't really work. So I'm going to go to the pixel persona and then I'm going to use the lasso freehand selection tool or lasso tool. And I'm going to select that. I'm going to make sure that I'm on a magnetic fine with new, I'm fine with feathered, everything that's there, I'm fine with. And again, I'm just going to zoom in a bit so I can see what I'm doing. And I click to start and then I let go of the mouse and I'm just guiding the lines with my mouse. I'm just drawing right round. And as you can see, it's snapping pretty cool. So I'm not holding any buttons down on my mouse. The only time I did was when I first started that off. So that is this one here. Maybe that could have gone in a bit nearer, but we can always. Hang on. I'm just going to control Z to undo. It's still doing that. So I'm just going to. Oh, it's going crazy. Right there. 
now it's gone in it's zoomed in a bit better so you can see that control z or z and does and because i haven't clicked anywhere and i haven't connected it i could still keep changing things now i'm going to connect to the end so it basically is i'm just going to click and it turns to these running ants and I want to keep those running ants because that is telling me it's selected. Now what I need to do next is I need to go onto the layer and right click. I'm just going to bring this in so you can actually see it in the recording area. So I'm going to right click and then I'm going to rasterize. So now that's rasterized my image, but it's still all connected. So what I do now is I actually make a duplicate of that selection. So I'm going to go Command J, or you could have done right click and duplicate. And then I'm just going to undo that and well, uncheck it, not undo it. And then to get rid of the running ants, I just do Command D or Control D and that will get rid of those running ants. So that is my cat. Now, if you want to know how to remove the color from that, I created another video and that'll be in the top right hand corner and that'll show you exactly how to do it for PNGs and JPEG. Go and follow that one for that. Now I'm going to actually show you how to do a photograph as well, because you might want to create thumbnails or you might want to put a photograph on your cover or something like that. And you want to move your backgrounds there as well so there's a couple of ways of doing that I'm just going to go file open and I'm going to go to pictures and I'm going to get this which is my thumbnail okay so again if I make a duplicate and I make a mistake I can always come back to that duplicate so now I need to make sure that I'm in the pixel persona tool. Now I can use the lasso tool again, again, making sure that I'm magnetic is selected. And again, just starting at some point and drawing round. So I can do this sort of thing here, but I need to end this image. So I'd have to go all the way around here and I've got dots and things like that. What I can do is I can go to refine and it's got some of my hair there. So what I can do is I can just draw there and it should actually now decide that it's going to include my hair there. So now I just go apply and again, I need to rasterize my image. And what I can do is I can do command J. And if I take that off, you'll see that I have now got that image. Now there's another way I could do that. So I'm going to take that one off. And the whole reason why you do a duplicate is so that you can show different techniques as well. So I'm going to use this one now, which is your selection brush tool. There are a couple of modes, this add, they subtract and you can change the size of the pixels of the brush. And then basically you just start going round and trying to get as accurate as you can. And you'll see that I've got some spaces there that have gone in. So I just go to subtract and basically just draw round where I want to subtract. Again, it's got that hair in. So I just draw there, got that there, might need to add now, and then subtract, and then I need to go back to add, and I want all of these, so if I want everything, I can up the size of my brush, and it basically just lets me drag out everything here, so my Bring my brush back down. I'm going to cut some of my face off. And then I go refine again. And again, if I'm not happy with something, I can just draw it there. And okay. So I think it's got everything. Again, apply. Again. 
I need to right click and rasterize. And this time I can just press delete and it should take off my background. And again, to get rid of the running ants, command D or control D. And that is different ways of how to actually remove a background from an image. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, don't forget to hit the subscription button to be notified about any other videos I make. And if you want to go and check out my course that is about actually creating coloring books using simple shapes in Affinity Designer, the link will be down in the description. And while you're here, you can go and check out my other Affinity Designer videos.